What up, Team TT? Welcome back to another Transformation Tuesdays video on my channel. If you are new here, I am Sonia, and you are tuning into a spiritual series that I do on my channel every single Tuesday. We're going to get back into the video in just one second, but I had to come tell you guys that I have a new Instagram name. So follow me on Instagram at simply Sonia underscore M. It is the same page, just a different name. So make sure you follow me here to keep up with all of my new posts, especially when I post a new YouTube video. Guys, we are still on the road to 500. I want to thank all of my new subscribers and all the subscribers that have been with me from the beginning. But we are still pushing to 500 by my 30th birthday on September 25th. So if you have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that notification button to be informed every time I upload a new video and guys let's keep growing let's keep pushing and now let's get back into the video welcome to all of my new subscribers and thank you to all of these subscribers who have been with me from the jump you should have just seen a clip talking about my new Instagram handle and that we are still on the road to 500. So make sure you do exactly what that little clip said. Subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram and keep supporting your girl. I really appreciate everybody who is here with me today. So as promised, I am starting a Bible series on my channel within these Transformation Tuesday videos. Now, if you watch my struggle with reading the Bible part one and two, you will know that I said that I was making a point to read the Bible every single day, even on weekends, okay, every single day, and apply it to my life. If you have not seen those two videos, stop here. Just hold on, sis. Go back and watch those two videos first. They will be linked in the description box below. But if you're all caught up with every single video on my channel, like I hope you are, then let's get going into today's topic. Today, we're gonna be talking about strengthening your faith. Now, I know I said I was gonna start with anxiety, but scrap that. We're gonna start with strengthening our faith. So the reason why I wanted to start with faith instead of anxiety is because I realized that my anxiety is linked directly to my weakened faith and the doubt and disbelief that I protrude out into my environment. So because I have doubt and disbelief and weakened faith, I get anxiety because I worry and get flustered about things that God says he's already in control over. So I'm choosing to focus on the source of the problem, which is my faith, versus the outcome of the problem, which is the anxiety that comes from my lack in faith. Okay, so as I explained within my Bible series, I want to pick something that I deal with every single week. I want to spend the week reading and studying what the Bible says about that. I wanna give that education to you all in a video and I wanna make a plan and make steps to actually implement what the Bible says into my life. We talked about on my last video that God calls us to not just be listeners of the word, but doers. So I am taking steps to actually do and live out these scriptures that I read about whatever ailment or situation that I'm talking about that week. So since we are talking about faith, of course you guys know I always have to give you a background story. If you're new to my channel, just know that every single topic that I talk about is based off of my own life experiences. I'm not talking just out the side of my neck, okay? I literally make a video every week about something that I am currently dealing with or something that I dealt with that I'm moving past and working towards. So I have a very close family member of mine who is sick. They have been dealing with cancer for I think over 11 years at this point and it has been literally a battle every single day of their lives for the past 11 or so years. And because they have been dealing with cancer for so long and their recent change in their health, my family has been very impacted um, by this situation. So I actually went home last weekend I believe or the weekend before last to spend time with this person and from my eyes looking at them, I started to prepare for them to pass away. Like emotionally and mentally, I started to prepare because of what the situation looked like for them to, you know, just no longer be with us. Um, it's, it's hard for me to talk about this and I'm not giving you every single detail out of respect for my family and the person, 
Um, but I, you guys know I love to share my testimony because I feel it does really help you guys. You guys message me and let me know how much it helps you guys. So I'm gonna give you um, kind of like a summarized version of this story, okay? Seeing this person in this condition brought up several emotions. It brought up hurts and pain and you know, just familial history and all of these things, seeing this person in their condition. And like I said, I began to prepare for the worst. That is the type of person that I tend to be. Whenever something happens, I start to prepare for the worst. I am not by any way saying that that is a good strategy to have. I'm just saying that's what my mind tends to go to. So while I was at home dealing with this situation face to face, seeing this person's condition face to face, and with everything that I've learned about God and about his Holy Spirit and his faith, I just didn't really feel powerful in that moment, seeing them the way that they were. I just didn't really feel strong enough to, you know, say this powerful prayer or, you know, manifest healing over them. I mean, when you're looking at some someone face to face, it sometimes can be very hard depending on who they are to you to, uh, you know, build up the strength to be able to look to the future and not focus on what you're currently seeing. And I remember praying to God and saying things like, you know, God, just have your way. You know, I didn't want to pray for anything too specific about the situation. So I just kind of like, just have your way, God. Whatever you want to do, I'm putting it in your hands, which is okay. But sometimes more than not, you need a specific powerful prayer about some things. And I just was not currently at that moment able to do that. I also was praying for God to forgive me for not having the strength to believe in this person's healing. You know, when you have seen someone suffer for such a long time and they haven't been completely healed, it gets hard to keep your faith in believing that their ultimate healing will happen on this earth. And again, like I said, I just didn't feel strong enough that weekend to pray for it, for, you know, this mighty healing, to pray for, you know, pray over them and just do all these things that they encourage us in the spirit to do. I just didn't. I was too emotional. I, I couldn't get that stuff out of me. So I actually, you know, had a very rough weekend, a very rough drive down and a very rough drive back up here. And I was just kind of feeling like in between emotions, like my emotions were coming in waves. At one point, you know, I felt like all was well in my soul and in my spirit with the situation. And then on the other hand, it wasn't. And so I did a lot of praying and talking to God during this time, but my soul really wasn't settled with the situation. So I ended up coming back up here and just getting back into the swings of life. And um, I watched Pastor Michael Ty's sermon on crazy faith. If you have not watched that sermon, sweetie, please go watch it. I will also link that sermon in the description box below. This sermon, in a matter of, I think that sermon is about an hour long, in the matter of an hour, all of that doubt and emotions and sadness and the mindset of death left me and I began to get my strength back and my faith back in God when it came to this situation. So pretty much in that video, Pastor Michael Todd talks about what faith is. He talks about um, the formula of faith and he also gives his crazy, ultimate crazy, beautiful testimony about him believing to get this specific building for his growing church. Um, again, I definitely challenge you to watch the video, but pretty much God gave him a vision for this specific bu building in Tulsa, Oklahoma that would be his church. And after years, after somebody else practically almost buying the building and then not being able to buy it, Pastor Michael Todd was blessed with the exact building, okay, that he had a vision for years ago. And in him believing that that building that God told him was the building for his church, his belief poured out into other people which encouraged them to actually donate money and invest in his vision for this building. And that is just a quick summary that does not do the video justice. So again, please go watch that video. But this video, you guys, gave me the, I don't know, it was like an energy shot, like an adrenaline shot of faith that I needed to believe for something bigger than myself, bigger than what my eyes could see when it came to my family member and their situation.
During the video, Pastor Michael Todd actually asked the audience, what is it that you have stopped having faith for? And as I'm sitting there watching the sermon, I'm like, okay, well, I have faith in what God said about my career. I have faith in what God said about me, you know, having a husband and having a family, about this businesswoman that I'm supposed to be, and about, you know, the people around me. The only thing that I could put my finger on that I didn't have faith in at that moment in time was the healing for my family member. And like I said, I had basically allowed what I can see, what I could physically see about the situation to steal my faith. And the reason why I say steal my faith is because also while watching that video, God actually reminded me that earlier this year, I had strong faith that my family member would be healed by December, that they would be released from this sickness and this ailment by December. I believe that earlier this year and I declared that over them earlier this year. And I actually had a conversation with them and told them that earlier this year in faith that I believe that. And because their situation seemed to decline instead of get better. And when I went to see them, it was just like, this does not look good. You know, everybody around them is pretty much making them comfortable. And it just, you know, when you say making somebody comfortable, you just waiting on, on that phone call pretty much. And I let that get in the way of what God had told me to declare over this person. So God pretty much asked me, where did that faith go? What, what happened to that? So after I completed this sermon, and after I wiped away my tears and reapplied my lashes, sis, I was fired up with faith. I was like, okay, we back in the game. My boxing gloves are back on. We're back in the ring. Like I'm turning my faith back up. I'm strengthening my faith again when it comes to this situation. I actually, once again, decreed and declared the healing of my family member. I wrote it down on my mirror so I could see it every single day. And I have since been looking at that message that I wrote down and praying over that every single day. Not only to strengthen the family member, but also to strengthen my own faith. And so strengthening your faith is literally what I wanna talk about today. I want to talk about this because I have noticed personally how many weak Christians there are out in this world and this is not to offend anybody But there are a lot of Christians who are settling for less and just not living their life on the edge for Christ and you guys I do not Want to be a Christian who limits God I don't want to be a Christian who just settles for less or settles for better than where I'm at now because I'm too afraid to believe for more. I don't want to be one of those Christians who who never ever believe that certain things could happen for me and my family. I don't want to be one of those people who are always rooting for someone else, but I'm never rooting for the amazing, awesome things for myself and my family. So since watching that sermon, I have been studying Hebrews 11 and 12. I told y'all this is a Bible series now. So all week I have literally been studying Hebrews chapters 11 and 12. And to prove it, y'all already know I have my notes, okay? So I have pages and pages of notes. Your girl has highlighted and color coordinated these notes, my good sis and brother, okay? She was not playing. I have studied. Okay, so I am going to be pretty much talking about Hebrews chapters 11 and 12 and what they say about faith and hopefully encouraging you all to strengthen your faith and check yourself like I had to check myself this past week, okay? So let's get into Hebrews and see what the word says about faith. Let's start with Hebrews chapter 11. Now Hebrews chapter 11 actually gives you the biblical definition of faith. Hebrews 11 one says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. It can also be described as the substance of things hoped for or the evidence of things not seen. Now Pastor Michael Todd in his video actually gives you his definition for crazy faith like the crazy faith he had to believe in this building that is now his church, okay? Um, and his definition of crazy faith is thoughts and actions that lack reason, but trusting fully in what you cannot explicitly prove. He actually gives a formula of faith. So the formula of faith is this. It is intellectual agreement, which is believing something is true, plus trust, 
which is relying on the fact that something is true equals faith. So intellectual agreement plus trust equals faith. So as believers, we have faith by putting our complete trust in God, okay? So that is the simplest way that I can give you a definition of faith. You put your complete trust in who God says he is and what his promises are and what he says he's gonna do in your life and in this world. In doing this, we connect power into the spiritual realm, which links us with God. It makes him a tangible reality to the perceptions of people. It is the basic ingredient to begin a relationship with God. If you don't believe God is real, then how are you gonna have a relationship with him? So the basic necessities of having a relationship with God is the faith that he is true, even though you can't see him. Hebrews 11:3 says, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. And to me, this scripture pretty much means that it references our knowledge and faith in the supernatural things of this world, such as God. God is not visible to the eye in the natural realm. However, he manifests himself on the earth in several different ways. And we have faith to believe in an unseen God. So when you're thinking about faith, know that faith is a choice. And God is asking us, what are you choosing to believe? And if you're believing in me, then you must also have faith in the things that I said I will do for you in this life. So bringing it back to my personal story, after I chose to begin to believe again for the healing of my family member, that weight and sadness and, and preparation for a funeral pretty much lifted off of me. I literally let that weight go and I was free to trust God and believe for a miracle that I know he's more than capable of. God has several stories in the Bible about the miracles that he did on earth through Jesus and we'll get into his track record later, but that is the number one source for you to strengthen your faith is to look at what he's already done in your life and other people's lives and use that as stamina and endurance to get through and conquer whatever situation you're going through. So the beginning of Hebrews 11 pretty much gives you a definition of faith. So now I wanna talk about what should we be having faith for? What exactly should we be applying our faith to? So God tells us to have faith for anything we ask for. We should have faith that the things we ask for will be bestowed unto us according to his will, his plan, and his way. The last part is important, according to his will, not yours, his plan, not yours, and his way, not yours. So if it don't align with his plan, boo-boo, you might wanna reconsider, you know what I mean, okay? We should have faith that our futures will be bright as he said we go from glory to glory. We should have faith for his mercy and his grace, healing and forgiveness and for his provisions. We should have faith that if he started a good work in us, that he is faithful to complete it. And you guys know we have, I have used that scripture in several videos before. But as humans, we oftentimes will only have faith for tangible worldly items. We will believe to no ends that God will give us a new house and a new car and bags of money and bags of clothes and, and bags, Chanel bags, specifically Jesus. I just, you know, just a black one, black and gold. That's all I, that's all I want, okay? And that's okay to have faith in those things. It's perfectly fine to believe God for those things, but God wants us to have faith in not just the tangible things of this world, but in the ultimate fast reward that he is gonna give us, which is eternal life in Christ. As you read Hebrews 11, it'll start to sum up that some of our Bible heroes like Moses never stepped into the complete promises that God made them. They literally passed away before they could live out these promises on earth, okay? But their faith kept them strong and encouraged them to endure on earth as they waited for God's ultimate promise of eternity. So literally, if you look at Hebrews 11 uh, verses 7 through 39, it lists several people in the Bible that had faith to do great things like Noah, having faith to build the ark even though it had never rained before. Abraham, the father of faith, literally, moving out of his home to an unknown land that he didn't know where he was going and having faith that God would direct him. 
Sarah's faith to conceive at 90 years old, birthing Abraham's descendants. Abraham, again, offering up his son that he waited years to have, Isaac, with faith that God was going to resurrect him. Isaac then blessing his sons, Jacob and Esau. Jacob blessing his two grandsons from Joseph on his deathbed, saying that they were going to be leaders of nations. Joseph prophesying about Exodus and the freeing of the children of Israel. Moses actually leading the children of Israel out of Egypt and Rahab the prostitute, hey girl, being friendly to the spies and in return her life being spared when they conquered the promised land. And there is so many more stories of faith and courage in the Bible as you know. But all of these people never lived long enough to see their children's promises play out or this person's promises play out. As you know, Moses died before they actually made it into the promised land. So Hebrews 11, 13 through 16 says that faith is the act of looking forward. You can physically see and feel the presence of your better future or things that are praying for. And that's usually what we call vision. But in some cases, like I said, these people did not live to see their promises fulfilled on earth. On earth is the key, okay? Yet, their perspective was eternal rather than temporary. They were looking forward to God's ultimate plans, which is eternal life in Christ. For those who truly trust in God, life on earth is merely a temporary journey. This is the kind of faith which allows us to trust God despite personal abuse or persecution struggles. And it allows us to obey difficult and confusing commandments as Noah did. We can trust God to make good on his word, even when it seems as if we waited too long, as did Abraham and Sarah. They ain't had no baby till they was 90. And you know what? At that point, I would have been like, pack it up, Jesus. <laughs> pack it up. Okay? But our girl Sarah pulled it through. All of this is not to scare you and to say that God's promises won't come true on earth. I don't want you guys to think like, oh Lord, the stuff I'm hoping through, I'm gonna die before I see it happen. No, that is not the case, okay? But God does not want us to just have faith for our own selfish reasons, selfish gain and ambitions. God doesn't just want us to have faith that he would bless us with houses and cars and bags and fame and all of this stuff. Those things are merely bonuses of our relationship with God. Those things are the miracles of our faith. But God doesn't want us to miss the message of having faith. So I wanna move into that topic to talk about that a little bit. What is the message behind having faith? Because I believe that a lot of times we get focused on the blessing, the actual tangible thing that God makes happen, but we don't take time to consider the message of something. What is God trying to tell us? What is God trying to teach us? Who is God trying to show you that he is through that blessing? So let's talk about what the message of faith is. So from my understanding, from what your girl has studied, okay, the bigger picture of faith is the ability to believe in the higher power and existence in an unseen God establishes and solidifies our relationship with him. To believe that God exists is to also believe that he is capable of all things he tells us he can do and who he is. So we're going to jump back in the chapter of Hebrews and go back to Hebrews 11 verses 5 through 6. This scripture is in reference to Enoch. Now before he, which is Enoch, was taken up, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So again, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. I want y'all to write that. If you don't write nothing else down, write that down. So to me, this speaks out to me and says that faith is about us pleasing God, not about him pleasing us. We really need to get that. It's about us pleasing him through our belief, not about him just pleasing us and giving us what we want. He will give you that, but it is impossible to please him without faith and belief in who he is and what he says he can do. Here's a question I have to challenge you all. 
Is just believing God exists enough for building strong, long, crazy faith? Like I can believe that God is real and that he exists, but I might not believe that he can change my life overnight, that he will make me into a millionaire, that he will heal my sick family member. Just because I believe God is real, is that enough for me to have this crazy, strong faith where I literally live my life on the edge for Christ and that I never limit God? I'm gonna give you the answer, no. And I'm gonna tell you why. James chapter two, verse 19 says, you believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe this and shudder. And this specific scripture is in reference to the term faith without works is dead. So you just believing in God that he is real and he's the one true God, is no different from what the demons believe. They know that God is real. They know what God can do. They know who he is and they tremor over that. But do you wanna be considered on the same level as demons in your faith and your belief? I know I don't. If I'm supposed to be rebuking demons in the name of Jesus, my faith has to be on a whole nother level of theirs, okay? And the faith that you need to have to be on this level of crazy, strong faith is the same faith that all of those people had that I listed before had. The same faith that Noah had to trust God to get up every single day for years and build an ark for a flood in a place that had never rained is crazy. It's crazy. If you've never seen rain before, right? You've never seen it, okay? And one day, God says, I'm gonna flood the earth with water and I need you to build a big old boat. And it's been years, okay, that you've been building this boat and not one drop of rain. That sounds crazy to the average person, but to a believer, that can be crazy. But guess what? We're supposed to have crazy faith to say, yeah, that sounds insane, but I trust my God and I'm gonna obey what he asks me to do. God is ultimately challenging us to level up our faith. Our faith cannot be on the same level of the demons that believe that God is real. They know God is real. As believers, we believe God is real, but we believe him for so much more. Just like Noah did, just like Abraham did, just like Sarah did, just like Jacob did, just like Isaac did, just like Job did who lost everything, okay? And still, after he had a meltdown, got his life together and brought it back to Jesus, okay? So it's not enough to just believe God is real. I know God is real and I have what I consider a very close relationship with God. But when I was faced with adversity and faced with pain and sadness, I lost my faith in that one area, even though I have a close relationship with God. So that's not enough. We literally have to make a choice every single day to put our trust in God, no matter what we see, no matter what the situation looks like, and no matter what we're going through. Summing up the end of Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about the marvelous things God's people have been able to do through faith. But it also talks about some of their sufferings and mistreatments due to their faith. It says, and all these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God has promised for God has something better in mind for us so that we would not reach perfection without us. And that was Hebrews 11, 39 through 40. So in summary, chapter 11 talks about God wanting us to have godly faith, which is ultimately defined as fully trusting him. It means relying on God despite doubts and fears because of what he has already done. Check his track record, boo. Check the receipts. Okay. Okay, so I've been talking about strengthening your faith, but you guys know I like to apply this realistically. Let's be realistic. It, it's hard to believe and have faith all the time because we have these things right here, which are your eyes, and then our biggest enemy, which is our mind, telling us the wrong stuff, okay? So how do we not grow weary when we are trying to have faith? So that is where Hebrews chapter 12 kicks in. This whole chapter pretty much is encouraging us to have faith and not grow weary or weak during times of struggle and discipline. 
So Hebrews chapter 12 verses one and two literally talks about how we have people on earth in heaven rooting for us to meet our marks. The scripture says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So this scripture tells us that we literally, like I said, have ancestors, angels, and the heroes of the Bible rooting for us in heaven. And of course we have the people on earth rooting for us as well. They are watching and continuously cheering us on. Therefore it is our job to turn away from sin and everything that is holding us back from meeting our marks living a happy and peaceful life in God and being our best spiritual self. And the people that we have rooting for us are always telling us this message. Don't grow weary in this fight. God disciplines us to strengthen us in our faith to the outcome that we are believing for. Hebrews 12, five, six says, my son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. And I love this scripture because it points out the fatherly portion of God. He is our spiritual father who loves us and wants to steer us into alignment with him. Hebrews 12, 11 says, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So if you allow yourself to be disciplined by God, and you actually implement the change that he is telling you to implement, it produces peace, it produces strength, it produces stronger, crazy faith, and you are in right sitting with God. So what am I doing to strengthen my faith? How am I choosing to strengthen my faith every day? The number one thing that you should know I'm gonna say by now is I am checking God's track record, okay? God has several stories in the Bible about his faithfulness and his trueness to his word and who he is, but he has shown up so many times in my personal life. And I am keeping a record of how many times he has made his promises manifest in my life. And I thought about something. God has come through for me in so many ways that I didn't ask him to, like stuff that I didn't even want and that I didn't even know that I wanted and asked him to. So if he has come through in those ways, how much more will he come through in the ways that I am having faith to believe? So if I look at his track record and remember who he has been in my life, that has helped me keep my faith where it needs to be. What I'm also doing is choosing to make a decision every day to believe in God's word over my life and those connected to me. Doubt is a thief of your faith and every time that doubt tries to come up and steal my joy okay i stop myself and i say you know what i'm not believing like that anymore i'm not choosing to believe those negative things that you're trying to tell me anymore i choose to believe in what god has promised me as you guys know i definitely write down my visions and if i have to go back and look at those visions i will and i continue to speak those things over myself as needed okay and then the final thing is i'm choosing to steward over my faith by continuously praying for the things I'm believing to be true. I find that for myself and I'm sure for other people as well, we tend to only pray for something once or twice and we're like, all right, I solidified that in my couple prayers. I don't have to pray for that anymore. And I'm finding out that that doesn't help you grow strong. What helps you grow strong is continuing to repeat those things because it helps you to believe it. It's all, it's almost like when you're trying to memorize something and you repeat it over and over again until, you, until it sticks and no matter where you are, you can regurgitate that. That is what I'm trying to do with my faith and the promises that I know God has told me will come to pass in my life. So those are the main ways that I am choosing to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer. I am choosing to make a decision every single day regardless of what I see, that God's promises are true. So in conclusion, you guys, go watch Pastor Michael Todd's video. It is going to change your life. Go watch it, okay? I am encouraging everyone to not be a weak Christian. Don't be weak in your faith. 
Do what you need to do to live your life on edge for Christ. Don't just take steps of faith. Take leaps of faith. Believe God for the most amazing, ridiculous, crazy things that you can believe him for. I promise you, if you believe long enough and strong enough, they will come to pass, you guys. So now it is time for our closing prayer. You are welcome to bow your head and close your eyes with me in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, first, I want to thank you for the leaders in this world that allow us to see what strong and crazy faith looks like and how it plays out in our lives, Lord God. It is difficult to tell us to have this type of faith when we haven't seen it exemplified in the earth. And so I thank you so much for the people that we have in our lives and in this world that can show us what it looks like if we just simply believe for something you've said and promised us and hold on to that crazy belief until it actually manifests out in this world. God, I thank you so much for showing us who you are continuously on a small scale and on a large scale, Lord God. You know, Lord God, that it is not easy for us to trust in things unseen, Father God. You know that it is so much easier for us to look at something and label it something just because that's what it looks like, Father God. But I thank you so much for the strength to believe in something invisible, Father God. Believe in something we feel and know to be true, Lord God. Visions are the things we see with our eyes closed, Father God. And I thank you so much for showing us those things and putting it in our hearts on a daily basis so that we can hear you and trust you, Father God. For all of us, Father God, who are struggling with developing strong, crazy faith, for all of us who tend to limit you, Lord God, and put you in a box and not believe that certain things can happen in our lives, for all of us who cheer on other people but never have the courage to cheer ourselves on, Father God, I rebuke all the disbelief, doubt, questioning, excuses, procrastination, and laziness in our spirits right now, Father God. You have called us to be Christians and believers who are so much higher than demons. Even the demons believe that you exist, Father God, but you've called us to be on a completely different level from that. You've called us to be powerful and strong in our faith to believe that the things that we read in the Bible can and will be true in our lives, Lord God. Speak to our disbelief and our doubt, Father God. Restore our mindset about the things that we have stopped hoping for, Lord God. Restore our mindset about the things that we see, Father God. Rebuke the voice inside of ourselves that tells us that things are not true and that question your word, Lord God. Rebuke the enemy that tries to tell us that we can't have the things of your promises, Lord God, and that the things don't exist. Father God, we know you are king of making something out of nothing, Lord God, as you created the earth out of void, Father God. You can create anything in and of this earth as you please. Lord God, use our testimonies of faith to influence other people, Lord God. We need to share our stories more of what you have made manifest in our lives to encourage our brothers and sisters to believe in who you are and the things that you can do, Father God. Whatever anybody watching this video is believing for, you count it already as done, Lord God. You have already planted the seed in this earth and we all are just on our own journey to get to those things that you have promised, Lord God. Let us trust you, God. Let us relinquish control of what we're trying to manifest and let us follow your ways to manifest the promises of this world. And let us not just have selfish faith, Lord God, faith that only wants you to give to us, consuming faith, Lord God, but let us believe for your ultimate gift and reward, which is eternal life in you. And in your name, I do pray. I love you, my King. Amen. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it encouraged you to start believing again and hoping again for whatever it is that you are having faith for. Remember, my Instagram name has changed. It is now simply Sonya underscore M. So make sure you are following me on Instagram. We are pushing to 500 subscribers by my 30th birthday on September 25th. So if you have yet to subscribe, please do so. Stay tuned for the videos coming up on my channel and our next Bible series next Tuesday and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!